Today I'll be showing you how to calculate the volume of solids of revolution using the disk method. So in calculus one, we learned that the volume under the curve is a definite integral of f of x from a to b, which is the known bound with respect to x. In calculus two, we extend our knowledge about the application of definite integrals to volumes of solids of revolution. We will be finding the definite integral of the volume of a cross section with its corresponding height. One of the techniques to calculate these volumes of revolution is the dist method, which is representative of its distinct shape. I'll be showing you what this dist looks like in an animation very soon. For dist method, given we have a function y equals f of x, our radius or representative rectangle is the distance of f of x or the curve from its axis of rotation. Either it's going to be x or y. The radius or rectangle will always be perpendicular to its axis of rotation. For the purpose of this example, our axis of rotation is going to be x-axis. Just like finding the volume of a disc or a cylinder, the area under the area of a circle or cross-section has to be multiplied by its corresponding height in order to get the volume. And in our formula, our dx or our change in x is actually going to be the height. By finding the definite integral of the volume of a cross-section of a solid from a to b, we're actually adding the volumes of an infinite amount of circular cross-sections with its corresponding dx or height from a to b. We can conclude that this method formula in terms of x is the integral of pi f of x squared dx from a to b. Similarly, if our axis of rotation is y-axis, then our function will have to be in terms of y. For example, given we have the function y equals square root of x, then x or g of y will equal y squared. I'll be showing you how to do the dis method with a trying to find a volume revolving around the x-axis. So given we have the function f of x equals square root of sine x, and 0 to pi are our bounds on the x-axis. After plugging it into the dis method formula of the volumes of solids of revolution, v equals integral of pi f of x squared dx, which is, means it's in terms of x from a to b. We plug in this square root of sine x. We'll find that this is what the visual representation of the function would look like. Because our f of x will always be our radius, you can see here that this is just one of the cross sections without revolving. And our radius is always going to be f of x and perpendicular to the x-axis uh, from 0 to 1. The pi can actually be taken out after trying to solve for it. The pi can be taken out because it doesn't have to be integrated because it's a constant. And after integrating, we find that using the dis method, our volume will be 2 pi. And this is just a little visual representation of how it would look. Visually, this is what the volume of the solid looks like in 3D. You can see that based on the picture, the top curve is really just the square root of sine x, and you could tell that our solid has no holes in it. I hope my video was helpful in your understanding of how to calculate the disk method and what it looks like. Thanks for watching.